let's just go ahead and get into it now. Dr. Contessa, congratulations. I'm glad your surgery was successful. I'm glad you went from a 40% chance of cancer to a 0% chance of cancer. And we still don't know about your dad diagnosis, but I hope he be in the clear and... I know it hurt and it sucks right now. And your children, I guess they ain't used to you being down on being down on your foot like that. So they want to sit there and chill with you, want to be all over you like they always be. And you had to tell them, no, get off me. I, 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 Y'all can't sit on me. Sit on the bed and sit down. Let's have a conversation. Like I know they want to jump on you and love on you and all that. Because like you said, you spent that whole... Was it a whole day in the hospital Why well, you spent a, a whole 24 hours in the hospital and your kids act like it didn't been a whole week? So I can understand how happy and excited they was to see you in. You had to talk to them. And then Mariah and Dr. Jarrett came and saw you. You tried with the fruit, with the um, fruit platter. That wasn't happening, and that wasn't going to get you nowhere. So Mariah came and brought you some flowers, and... They didn't know apparently you had surgery because you said in the actual episode that you had waited until you was done with surgery, when you was out of surgery, doing better, and not when you sent the text to everybody, including Toya ass, that didn't appreciate that you put her in the runners on the text message. We'll get on her ass later on, though, but, like, they didn't know, the, they didn't know what was going on. The only person that knew what knew what was going on was Dr. Jackie because she talked to you and she had a conversation with you and she wanted to know why you was doing this and all that. So there was concern, there was worry, and then that party came up and you talked about your breast. So did you get them removed or you just got them? smaller or augmentated or I have to wait and see when you get better and I'll be able to tell a different song. That was about all that happened with them and mentioning that party that choir came to so Heavenly and Daddy. So Buddy mad at Daddy cause Daddy wasn't waiting out there in the Atlanta heat waiting on her to come home and she went around searching for him, calling his name in the um in the house. He died there, I guess, working on a Laura song or editing a song for her or doing a beat or whatever he was doing for her. And um Dr. Heavenly, don't act like you surprised or shocked that this helped you all and this did you a bit of good going to, going to Miami, dealing with what you had to deal with. Like like I said, you saw what your husband went through. You saw a different him and you saw a better him after he went to Barbados and sat there and had a conversation uh, with his daddy. Was that his daddy or his mama? Whichever one it was at that grave and you seen... That did him a bit of good, so I don't know why you so surprised and shocked that this Miami trip did you a bit of a bit of good. Like I see you changing through this episode. I was actually impressed with you and surprised that you didn't engage with Mariah. You was calm. I don't think you overstepped your boundary when it came to the whole Simone thing because Simone need to be hit across the head or leave um, Cecil the hell alone and let that man go find somebody that he can actually have sex with. And I'm getting off top, top it though, but for the most part, Dr. Heavenly, I'm seeing a little bit of change in you. I appreciate this change. If that's all you need to do is take your ass to Miami and deal with what you had to deal with, but we can get a uh, less mean Dr. Heavenly. Well, I appreciate you, and I appreciate Bravo for taking us on this journey. And like I said, you're doing a lot better and better. And I see an actual, an actual change in you, and I see that you like you more calm now. You're more cool now. It's like you ain't saying stuff just to be saying stuff. Like you actually click, you actually care, and I guess you actually being patient. I mean, you actually wording your words carefully, and 
not saying stuff at the top of your head, but I guess you putting a little bit more care in what you saying now. I see a little change. I ain't gonna give you no bit dance yet. Um, um, heavenly head. I give you a bit dance at the reunion. But I'm going fin to finish out this season first before I give you a big dance saying, yep, she changed it. Yep, she doing better though. But yeah, I went to the end of this re I went to the end of this season and see, have you really changed? Or are this just a stunt? Or are you just putting your foot back in the mud just yet in? Is Mariah going to piss you off again? Because I know you and Mariah going to get into it again. It's, it never fails. Quad and uh, Mariah, you and Mariah, Toya and Katelsa, well, Katelsa dealing with her own shit and she ain't stunned Toya, but Toya by herself, without Katelsa engaging with her, like, if, like, without Toya and Katelsa, we can always expect Toya and Mariah, or Quad, I mean, or Toya and Mariah, or Mariah in Heavenly, I always get into it, so I'm not going to be surprised or shocked, but like I said, I wait and see Dr. Hevelyn to see if you actually going to change or you just or you just doing this for TV and you being calm before Hurricane Heavenly come out again, so we'll wait and see, but good job, though. I'll go ahead and give you a good job now. Jackie and Curtis. So you still on this, I want to move to another place. I'm tired of this place. Why getting the, um, the allergy off your um the allergy and the dust and the pollen off your lawn chairs? So while you was in Miami helping Dr. Heavenly with herself, you had Cecil going around looking at houses for you. Now, Dr. Jackie, I ain't saying you can't trust, um... Is I'm saying the right Cecil Curtis. Now I ain't saying you can't you can't trust Curtis though, but in the back of my mind, I still think about what he done to me and how he cheated on me. So you trusting him, so and you still talking about this house that was how many seasons ago and you still wanna move again, so I'm glad y'all doing better. And Curtis, you really is sick. You really is sick. Cause you was coughing and <laughs> all the way through this episode. Y'all notice how Curtis how Curtis kept on coughing and <laughs> all through this episode. And <laughs> like you can hear him anywhere. They ain't even much out to show him and you heard him coughing in the background. Like yeah, you really is sick, and you really do got whatever you said you had, a cold or a sore throat or something. You really had that, and what's going on with you, and Toya Eugene and his house and his kids. Okay, Toya, that's enough of you and your house now. Weed inside the house two times now. You finally let the kids see the house. I guess y'all didn't bought the house or whatever. So it's y'all house, y'all getting it built. I'm happy for you. I'm congratulating you. You worked on my damn nerves at the end of this episode. And I might get in your ass at the end of this episode, though, but good job, and I hope you keep this house longer than you kept the other houses. How about that? Now, this is a house you getting built, meaning you got taxes on this house, and this your property, so I hope you keep this house longer. And this won't be your fifth time moving, just like you told the kids they was happening that side of the see the house, and... They want to know where their rooms was, and you said the kids was over y'all, and y'all guests downstairs or whatever, and you are screaming when you and Eugene have sex, so, and you don't want the kids above you, you want the kids way over here somewhere away from you, so... And you getting some, um, you soundproof in your room, basically, where you can holler, scream, or whatever when Eugene be hitting y'all. Didn't I tell y'all not to mention sex no more? That reminds me. And that's all y'all got to offer Eugene and Toya is y'all sex. 
Because I really don't want to hear it and I really don't want to talk about it. And that seems like every time they show y'all sex involved or something sexual involving y'all two nasty fuckers together, y'all talking about sex. So if that's all y'all got to offer, I don't care to hear. Oh, man. You talked about the kids and they like the house or whatever and... The kids, where he go to boom with the kids, and y'all them moved four times. Now the kids may or may not be in the school where all their friends at over here, because y'all moving over here, and you get in the house bill, then this y'all fourth time moving. And now the kids may or may not lose their friends, no thanks to y'all two irresponsibles, and y'all moving all this goddamn time, and... Toya, I'm not going to talk about your childhood and your upbringing, but I guess you think that normal moving full-time just because your parents move full-time. I guess you think that's normal or whatever, but that's really not normal. And normal people don't move nothing but maybe one or two times, and y'all done move four times, and the kids done got used to their school, the teacher, their friends. Day schedule, the buses, if y'all taking them to school, the lunch and all that. Like, why would y'all uproot the kids just because y'all can't get it together? And now y'all got to punish the kids. And they may or may not be able to, they may or may not lose their friends. No thanks to y'all ir irresponsible asses. Like, y'all better make that work. Don't punish the kids because y'all can't get it together. Toy and Eugene, y'all need y'all behinds. Well, this y'all fourth time moving. The kids might lose their school, their friends, and all that. No thanks to y'all moving four damn times. And y'all trying to keep up with the Joneses. Like, y'all better make that work. Don't take them kids out their school away from their friends because y'all can't get y'all act together. Like, y'all better burn up the extra gas and the extra miles and deal with it. Because that's y'all fault, not the kids' fault. Why must the kids suffer? Because y'all can't get it together. Like, that's kind of fucked up, Toya and Eugene. I'm just going to put that on out there. That's kind of fucked up and shitty, Dad. The kids might lose they good thing at their school because of y'all asses. And y'all, um... And y'all can't get y'all shit together or act together. So, hopefully y'all find a way to make that work or you keep the kids in school or whatever. And we find out, we find out doing um, Dr. Jared party that Eugene bit promotion that he got is he the director of a hospital now, meaning that he the director, mean he the boss, meaning and somebody said they can't make it. He got to take somebody else's shelf in. He couldn't make it. Greg didn't come to the party. And he didn't want to be a newspaper reporter and want to know why um why Greg couldn't make it. He said we already know why Eugene can't make it. Now what's Greg excuse why he can't be here? Um, we'll get on that more in a second, but I had to point that out in the obvious of him being messy and Mariah to telling him to calm down and shh and Dr. Aiden, shh, Aiden, a Aiden, shh, Aiden, shh. She's sitting up there telling him to hush and he's still talking like mom ain't telling you to shut the fuck up and you being messy and come and cut it out and calm down. But, um, what else? Simone and Cecil and the kids. Simone. Okay, next week episode, we find out that you finally gave Cecil some sex. It's about goddamn time, cause I hope you weren't expecting to keep that man happy and to keep that man eyes from wondering you wouldn't get that man no sex. And the fact that you gave that man pushback was it Miles or was it the other one that did their first year of college? So they back home. Cecil talking about moving back in together. Now, Simone, you didn't enjoy your little free time. Y'all was heading in the divorce via. Divorce via got canceled. Canceled. 
Y'all talking about moving back in with each other. It's finally fit to come a fair show and you giving back all this pushback. You won't get a man says that man wanna move back in the house, back in the get move back in the house as a family together. You're catching hell with that and you quibbing him and you're giving him pushback over that too. Like, God damn, Simone, would you get a man a happy ending at the end? God, like, Simone, like, I'm rooting for you and I'm cheering for you, but not really cause you really are an asshole, aren't you? Like, you won't get a man says the man look like he accepts that, accepts that and I guess he willing to wait on your terms and when you decide to give him some or whatever. But now you fighting a man about being a family and moving in together. And then you went on his talk about, then you went on. Wait, then when he asked, what's the push, what's the pushback? Why are you avoiding this? Like, why you don't want to move in as a family together? Your ass went straight to one of his social medias talking about some, why you want to move in together? I, I, she said six months or nine months that her house been clean. And she been enjoying the peace and silence, the peace and silence, and she happy the way her life is now. Peace, calm, quiet, and not a lot of fuss. And you talking about he happy on social media, and he smiling in all his pictures and all that. But you talking about peace, calm, and quiet. But when they showed y'all pictures, I think that was Instagram. I think we caught one picture of you smiling in and you weren't really smiling. You gave her just a little evil little frown like, here goes something. Y'all better run with it and roll with it and leave me ahead of to get the camera out my face like, Simone, you got a whole family. You got a whole marriage to deal with. I know you enjoyed your time away from, I know you enjoyed your freedom when... You was playing like you were single, dealing the single life, enjoying your house in the peace, calm, and silence by yourself, though. But Simone, sooner or later, that man gonna push back on your ass and you gonna start yelling and screaming, I guess. Like, Simone, you is doing the absolute most and I don't understand it. Like, I understand that you enjoyed your house for six months. The peace, the quietness, the cleanness, the cleanliness of it. You can do what you want. Walk around naked, blast the music, the TV, and all that, though. But how do you expect your family, or better yet, you got a whole goddamn family? That sounds like the single life you live, and like you want to be single all of a sudden. But you got a husband and two kids, and this man want to move back in. He ignoring the sex and basically telling you and waiting on you, patiently on you about the sex thing. You won't give him sex, but when he want to move back in, you want to be mad and. You want to cuss and talking about some six months and I've been enjoying myself and the house been clean like Simone, you better get your shit together for you end up losing your man. And this time I won't feel sorry for you because you is doing the absolute most with that end. You need to get our man a break somewhere. Bad enough you won't get a man no sex and... Look like he ain't the type to have a wandering eye. Lucky you, you picked a good man. Even though you not being a good wife and at least giving that man something involving sexual. Even if it's a kissing, give that man something to give that man the arm. Slide that man over to the next excuse. I mean, come on now, Simone now. You know how to keep a man. Should nobody have to tell you how to keep a man. Keep a man. Like, um... Dr. Heavenly at that party was trying to tell you how to keep your man happy and pleased and not looking at the next thing that walked past his eye like, you better get it together some more for you and not really losing him for good this time. And it's probably going to be via cheating because you won't give him none. I ain't spending too much time spending too much time on um, quieting her marriage and... She finally moved on and she got her mom and aunt there. She talking to them off the lunch.
talking about she moved out and her birthday and they argued at her birthday and she moved out, I guess, after her birthday. They text each other, but they don't get along. Quite how much sense does that make? Y'all don't get along, but you in another place and you gave him the house, but y'all can get along via text message, but y'all can't get along face to face. Like, quiet, I'm not believing nothing you say at this moment. And if y'all is fighting like y'all say y'all fighting, well, Bravo have failed us then for not showing us that footage of y'all actually fighting. Because they had plenty of damn footage, footage last season of y'all arguing and fighting and talking about the voice and... He don't love me. He won't take out the trash. He won't mop the floor, clean the bathroom. Like, where's all this footage of y'all fighting? It's like, you saying all this and all that, and y'all doing this and all that. What did you do? Push Bravo out your house, and they ain't even much got audio of y'all fighting. How come quiet y'all doing all this fighting? But yet, we... Have we seen them argue this season? Only my think we seen them argue this season. Like last season, they had plenty of footage of y'all fighting. This season, the footage of y'all arguing and fighting has seen the went ghost. And we can't find no footage. But you saying y'all arguing and fighting, but y'all can get along via text message. But y'all fighting and it got explosive and you moved out like. Quad, I ain't believing nothing you said. We got to hear from you. I don't want it. Because like I said, I can't get over last year how you lied to us all. And you told us all this and that and the other. And to find out it wasn't as, well, it was as serious as you were trying to play it off like it was. Like the trash and the garbage can and mopping the floor and all that. So, Quad, I ain't believing none of your hype in. Forgive me if we ain't got no footage so Bravo slipping then if we ain't got no footage of y'all fighting cause I think we might have seen one footage of y'all fighting. That's about it. So so Bravo had done a shitty job this season and they ain't got you they ain't got enough footage of y'all fighting to say that y'all fighting that bad dad. You had to move out and stole that man's sleep number bed and not so that man furniture. So, quiet, I ain't believing it. And the fact that you got your aunt and your, what is an aunt and mother in this, and you had them talk to him, quiet, I ain't paying your ass no damn attention. I'm sorry. I know you want us to believe that, but I can't get past it. And I ain't going to believe your little white lies like you like to tell so damn much. Now that this party, everybody came to say up, Greg and Eugene. Toya had a big opinion about every goddamn thing. Quad, you was doing the absolute most when it came to her asking about, well, gosh, twice in, twi what you said, twice in one month. And... You took that the wrong way and you had your little smart aleck remark and here go Mariah running to Simone, walked off and talking to Simone, talking about some. All Toya said was, we seen you twice in one month and she took that the wrong way. Didn't even must speak or whatever you was over there telling Simone about quiet and... Then they got to the, um, I'm trying to keep up with this. <laughs> Um, oh, um, Simone, not Simone, Jackie and Quad, they talked, had a little conversation about opening up, talking to us, don't shut us out, which also ended the show with them talking about the tools and us helping you. She was able to laugh with Simone and have a moment with Simone. We got eight in there, so that asking where Dr. Greg is, and we know where Eugene is, where Dr. Greg is. Like, that whole party was all over the place, from toying and her new accessory with her alcohol on her wrist, now all of a sudden, got like a little bracelet with the wrist, with, um, with her Patron in, that she pulled in the cup, like... That part was all over the place, and Mariah wouldn't shut up to let Quad tell her side of the story or what's going on with her. 
Quad, you ain't gonna open up in front of all them girls. You and Mariah, y'all get along though, but you ain't ready to tell Mariah all your goddamn business of what's going on with your relationship. And I do believe you was gonna tell us something or tell the girls something, but I don't believe you were gonna tell them every goddamn thing. And I know you talked about reconnecting and getting along and this and that and the third and. Who was that in the background? Like, we got big jobs and mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah, we got little jobs and the big jobs. And who was that in the background? I could never catch who that voice was. I'm pretty sure it might have been Mariah. Or it could have. I don't know who that was in the background when Quad was talking about jobs and all that, though. But they was annoying. Mariah was annoying. Aiden tripped me out. I can't much be mad at Aiden. Aiden was being a little messy and Aiden was trying to get the shit started. So, and Dr. Heavenly, you did handle that part well when they asked you and you said your opinion and um, Quiet had points and Mariah had points though, but she wanted to talk and you won't let her talk like you had a point there and, um, Oh, yeah, I forgot about the text and the Catessa thing. I forgot about that. Like, the part... Toya, you coming off as a... Toya, I don't know what the hell is wrong with you, but you coming off as... You coming off that you a very needy person, and I don't know how the fuck Eugene love you, though, but... The whole and uh, the cartel saying the text messaging, she didn't want to warn, uh, she didn't want to worry y'all or make y'all wonder. I guess is she all right? Is she alive? And like um, Dr. Jackie said, you was lucky to receive a text message. Everybody else got a text message. You was lucky and, and um, you was lucky and a lucky draw to get a text message because she could have left you out that text message and had your ass all mad again like you was mad at her because she didn't show up to your party like like Dr. Jackie said and Quad said you sitting up here acting like the woman dead and gone and all that it's just a I'm okay y'all don't worry about me I had surgery and I ain't want to worry y'all like and they clown your ass in that confessional and you deserved it all and more about Dr. Jacket talking about I'm going to use the bathroom and here you go and she want to know every goddamn thing. Like they clown your ass in that confessional and you deserve that because you're a little bit of too much of a needy friend and I wouldn't want you around me anyways, Toya. And I wouldn't tell you my business neither in him. That's about where it ended at, I think, with them men. Quad and Simone had that moment and Heavenly said what she got for her trip in Miami and that she had a moment with Simone also saying that she working, she growing on herself and she gave her advice to Simone and about how to keep her man happy and how to love on her man and giving them sex and make sure they needs are taken care of. But you won't have him doing the wandering eye and trying to find the next thing they're smoking and um Heavenly said her part about the um about the Miami trip and about Simone and her yelling and her squealing and when she get all loud with you and all that and Quad said she didn't like that either. And that's about all that happened. Oh yeah, Dr. Scott and that showed up and Aiden, I fucked it up. My fault about the whole Aiden thing and Dr. Scott showed up and tore your neat ass. Anyways though, y'all, that was... That was about the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. Bye.